Hello guys, welcome back to my channel. So I've been putting out fishing videos, I've just been very poor the past couple of days, so I feel a lot better now. Hopefully I'll be out next week to film some more fishing videos for you guys. In this video I just want to do a bit of a follow up on the video I've just done recently on my rod setups. And I'm, I'm going to talk about perch and trout lures. I don't feel like I need to do pike lures because pike, pike lures, you'll either have them rigged up already with hooks on them or you can just get a shad, a big shad, and you just get some a sh screwing shallow shallow rig with hooks on it already. So there's a, there's a more to perch fishing I find than pike fishing. So I'm just going to show you a few lures that I've had success with on throughout, you know, the years. And hopefully it'll help you guys as well if you're just getting into lure fishing. And you want to, you know, a, start, a bit of a start base. So we're going to talk about shad to start off with. So first one I'm going to show you is the Fox Ray Spiky Shad. It's one of me, one of my favourite lures for perch. You see there, all all the spikes is on the air. It just gives off loads of vibration in the water, and it's got a nice big fat paddle tail to it as well. I've had a lot, of, a lot of success on these recently, on you know this colour and different variation of colours. So I've had, you know, that's a good. But these come with already a jig head attached to them already. So if you just get into lure fishing, you can, you know, look online for spiky shads, and they'll, they'll already have a jig head on them already. So you don't need to buy separate jig heads for them. All right, guys. So that's a good one to have. So I'm going to show you this lure, then I'm going to tell you the difference between the one I've just showed you and this one. So this is the Fox Rage Slick Shad. So it's just pretty much a nice bait, bait fish sort of shape, but it's got a very thin tail. So it's more of a, a quick motion through the water. Less, it takes, you know, it's not as much vibrations on that lure. But if you're fishing, for example, if you had a great success on this lure in the past and you're not getting anything on that, try go to a shad with a thinner profile tail. Because sometimes precious fish don't want anything, you know, in the face, you know, vibrating like you know, you know, like crazy. They want something with a a less vibrations, you know, something with a more subtle presentation. And I find from, I'll be fishing, you know, that shad, then all of a sudden I'll go to that one and I'll catch. And I think it's to do with a thinner profile of the tail. You know, they don't, they don't want anything in the face. So yeah, so that that's a good lure as well. Okay. So the next one I'm going to show you is this one I've been having great success on recently. So this is... A Ned lure, so it's a TBD lure, which means it's pretty much floating. So once it's on the bottom, it will stick up like that. So it just looks like a, a feeding fish, you know, feed on bottom. And you can just bounce it along the bottom. It's very good for winter time, I find, because you can just jig it once. It'll just hop like that, and you can just keep it there for however long you want. You know, I've left it there for ten seconds, that all of a sudden I get a bite. So that's good. I like to fish this on the Texas rig. If you want me to do a video on setting up on, you know, setting up a Texas rig or, you know, up different rigs for perch, then just leave a video. Ooh, just leave a, a video in the description box and I'll do one for you. But there's plenty of videos out there to show you how to set up a Texas rig and stuff like that. So you don't really need me to do it. And I find the Texas rig is very good for pressured fish. Because perch, I, f I found that they're very weight resistant. They don't like a lot of weight in the mouth. As soon as they feel any sort of, you know, a lot of weight, they'll spit the hook. They'll just leave it. With a Texas rig, the weight slides slides up and down. So as soon as they take that bait and they start pulling against it, that weight will just slide up. So they won't feel any weight at all. So that's very good for, you know, pressured perch. And it's good for winter in general. So yeah, that's the Ned. Ned. Uh, but that's the... Corum squirms five centimeters. The first video I've ever put out 
with me perched fishing on the canal, it, them two decent fish that I had were on, on this on this exact lure and the Texas, it was attached to a Texas rig. So yeah, that's a good one to go for guys. So the next one I'm going to show you is, it's just a smaller profile shad. This lure, all around general, it's good for perch, trout, you know, it's, it's very, I've had big perch on it and I've had smaller perch on it. So this is the Nano Minnow. So I can put that in focus. It's a very small profile to it. And they've got all a range of different colours. You know, you can pick whatever colour you want. I just picked out white at the time. So. so this is just good for wasping. You know, if you were just wanting to search the canal for some fish, just to find where they are, sticking this on, it's a good search bait all around just to flick it about, see if you can find the fish. Then as soon as you think you found the fish, add a couple of fish. If you want to scale up to try and find the bigger one out of the bunch, you know, you can do. Or you can just stick to this and just, you know, go for numbers for perch. So that's a good for perch and trout. You know, I've had a lot of good trout on this as well. So that's Nano Minnow. So the next one I'm going to go for is this. So this. I've been doing a lot of research on this with smaller perch feeding what they tend to feed on through different seasons and from what I've seen and I've experienced it myself in winter time the perch the smaller perch don't want they don't tend to feed on bait fish a lot they can't they find it hard to digest you know bait fish probably because the metabolism is slowing down and stuff like that so they, they can't you know digest so I, I have a lot of success on crayfish insects or invertebrates you know presentations and this is a nice it's not a big it's not a big crayfish lure you can get whatever colour you want I just decided to go black and I'll explain the reason why I like the colour black in particular but yeah, that's a crayfish lure and it's attached to a weedless setup because with crayfish lures, I tend to like to fish them on the bottom. So if you can see, it's attached to a cheb weight and just a weedless weedless hook. And I just like, most of the time, I like bouncing the crayfish along the bottom. It's just, it's a nice it's a nice winter lure, it's crayfish lure, so fine. It's a good search bait as well. But yeah, crayfish imitations is it's good for winter for the smaller perch. Even the bigger perch will have it, but it's good for the smaller perch in particular. So next one. So what well, this is one of my one of my all time favourite perch lures as well. Well I've got a few all time favourite perch lures, but this is come it comes close to one of the top ones. And to be fair, it's good for jack pike as well. Jack pike love it as well. It's the copy toe shad. This is a very good search bait as well. I've had a, a lot of a lot of pike on it and a lot of big perch on this as well. So you find here the, the tail it's got two ribbed sections in it. You can see how flexible that tail is. It's just flopping. And that's just a lot of vibration in the water. You, you if you if you were to get these and you would fish it, you'll see what I mean, how the tail is just flicking about like that. It's just all over the shop. It's, before I go on to the next one, I'm going to just, you know, go into the colour. I hear a lot about people that are asking about what's the best colour for murky water. And a lot of people tend to go fire, say, fire tiger or, you know, a chartreuse colour. For me, and I've, I've, I've seen this in the water, I've seen underwater footage of different colours lures in murky water. And the brown and the blacks tend to stand, stand out more than the fire tigers and the chartreuse colours. It, it just gives off a lot more better silhouette in the water. So if you're fishing a murky canal and you, you, you think, ah, oh, it's not worth fishing, it is worth fishing. Just stick a black colour on and it will stand out in the water and then they, they will see it. If you don't get bites on the black colour in the murky canal, try going for a little spinner. Or a little cramp bait. But yeah, black's a very good colour for murky water. 
So, we've discussed these last two layers, because this is sort of a baseline to get you started, you know, a few different presentations of layers, so I don't need to go crazy on showing all my layers, because they all have pretty much the same purpose, I just like getting loads of layers. So, my mate introduced me to these, you can check his channel out as well, it's GRB Fishing. And he got these, and he's had loads of success on these for trout, perch. He caught a nice trout on one of these, caught a six pound trout he had on one of these. It's a one gram, a one gram spinner. <laughs> you know, it's a tiny, tiny little spinner. So I'll show you the blade if I can. Like a fire tiger, but you can get you can get bait, like a silver colour or a bronze colour. I forgot what this company by, but if you just type in one gram uh, spinners online, you'll 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 see them crop up somewhere, and it's got a single hook on these, which is it, it, it tends to be better for trout, you know, in my opinion, single hooks, unless you're fishing cramp baits. But I find a lot of people are fishing cramp baits for trout. They take the treble the trebles off and put single hooks on, because trout tend to flip a lot. Once you get them in the net and land them, they, they flip a lot, and you know it's a bit better, for, you know, for fish's welfare with single hooks. They're not likely to get stuck in the fish itself. But his idea as well was to put a little tiny trailer on it as well. So instead, it's got that vibration as well of the blade. Also, it's got the trailer on as well with a little tail. And he, he was catching a lot of perch, a lot of perch, a lot of trout. I'm saying that he was catching, he was been catching a lot of perch on on the, on the spinner in summertime as well. But we were catching a lot of trout, you know, and he caught a big trout as well. So these are very good for actually, as a, a, as the previous video I did, you know, was talking about me with trout setup, a lot of stream fishing. This would be perfect, a one gram spinner because you're fishing it fairly quick anyway, the spinner. So it's very good for streams as well, a one gram spinner. So that's good for perch and and for trout. So, you know, the last one I'm going to show you is cramp baits. So this I think this is the this is the Western buzz bite. You know, I think that's mostly perch pine. You know, you hear a lot of things about cramp baits that they can only be fished in summertime. You can't catch them in winter time on 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 cramp baits. You can. I feel the venue and the fish themselves it does take you've got to take them take that into account as well. Catching the perch on cramp baits in the canal in winter time, it's it'd be tough going, very tough going because they've got that much bait fish around them. They're just you know laying on the bottom or just not doing a lot. If they don't want to chase your cramp bait. They'll just stick to it. You know I'll have just that bait fish there. You know I'm just not moving a lot. I can just take it whenever I want to. But with river perch, they're a lot more opportunistic, a lot more aggressive, and they're, they're, they are willing to chase. So cramp baits are still good in winter time for river perch. So if, you, if you've got any river perch near you guys, put a cramp bait on because they are willing to chase for that. And just get away. Different. You don't have to be the way. You can just get any cramp baits to get, to get you started. But what I will tell you guys is, if you see this lip here, it's quite a long lip. So this goes down to about eight, three to eight foot. So when you do get cramp baits, you know you got you, with the waters that you fish, how much depth they are. Don't go with a cramp bait that can go up to eight foot if your river's only five foot deep, because you just be smacking the bottom constantly and you you end up snagging it up and losing it. So when you do get cramp baits, make sure you go look in the description box and and see how much depth they go up to, because you'll find the shallower ones will have a shorter lip. So Make sure you know how much depth your cramp base go go up to. Okay. Right, it was just a little short video for you guys. It's some of the lures that I've I find I've had success on with perch and trout. But hopefully next guys, next week guys, I'll be uh, getting some fishing content out for you guys. So alright, see you later guys.